Good evening, I'm gonna call the workshop shop session to order. We're gonna move right into the agenda, city manager's report and issues raised at prior council meetings. None at this time. Special event applications. I don't believe there was any. Yep. Yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah. At least you went home sick today. <laughs> Is there any questions on any of the specific ones while I'm pulling it up? No questions. <laughs> Review of agenda items for this evening's meeting. meeting we have um, an application for the Thompson Shop Summer Store Initiative Program. This is an annual grant that we receive. Um, it puts police officers in various establishments uh, throughout the city. Um, where there's a resolution for permission to apply for a FEMA Assistance Firefighters Grant. There's a 5% uh, local match on that. If you have any questions, the fire chief can answer the questions. Um, resolution 2018-60 is a resolution of approving an appointment to the City of Asbury Park Green Team. Um, we're looking for members. Uh, I'm the chair of the Green Team. If anyone wants to, to volunteer, it is the Green Team is part of the Sustainable New Jersey, to, is, which is an effort to make the city um, more environmentally friendly, quote unquote, Green Team. Um, the Green Team now is comprised of the basic members that are required. Uh, last year, the city was recertified as bronze for the first time in seven years. But we are looking for members to apply. So if anyone knows anyone, please ask them to apply for the Green Team. And Resolution 2018-61 is opposing uh, offshore oil and gas activities, which we've been seeing in the news from the President and Administration. Resolution 2018-62 is approving the payment of bills. Resolution 63 is the uh, temporary budget. Resolution 2018-64 is the award of a contract for tra traffic striking services. Um, in fiscal year 2017, we went over the, the bid threshold. Um, so at this point, we need to, we, we advertised this in December. Um, the price was phenomenal, which is attached to the resolution. Uh, the average cost last year was five to seven dollars a letter. <coughs> when we put this out to bid, it was a dollar uh, for number of letter. So this is a, a huge cost savings from what we did last year. Um, so we're recommending a word for this for fiscal year 18. Um, resolution 2018-65 is authorizing professional services for technical assistance with the Mayor's Ball Foundation. A few years ago, maybe five or seven years ago, um, a previous council, none of you were on this, created the Mayor's Ball. Um, the, the foundation was actually 501c3. I'm afraid to correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. And it was made up entirely of the council members. Um, so over the years, the organization hasn't filed anything with the IRS. There's no active bank statement. Um, but it's still on the city's quote unquote books for us having an aspect of it because it's all former council members. If I can just, one item is that um, those who are on the board were not the council members per se, it yes. was staff members of the city. So we want to clean this up. Wait, yeah. part, say that one more time. Staff about? members of the city. Oh, not the council. Many of whom are no longer working okay. for the city. Got you. So the bank account came here, it was registered here. So for the last few years, Fred has kept it active uh, with the $10 filing fee, I think it is. Annual filing. So just so we have it, but we need, now we're at the point where we have to do something. Um, so Fred has worked with this company before. We've had a conference call with them um, of how to fix this with the IRS. Uh, it'll take a couple months for them to clean it up, but we this has to be fixed. Um, I talked to our fiscal monitor, who's very happy that we're cleaning up some of these old actions that we found um, and authorizes a professional service from this side. But, so we're asking that this allows Fred and myself to work with them to try to clean this up. And this is a professional accounting firm that has a specialty in working with nonprofits and doing the tax filings and dealing with the types of problems that we uncovered here. And that is due to the failure to 
um, undertake certain efforts in the past. You've had some issues with the 501c3 status associated with this foundation, and they're prepared to help you um, correct that and get that designation back. Okay. Um, resolution 2018-67 is the Waterfront Redevelopment Plan Amendments. Um, as been discussed over the last year. This is a referral to the Planning Board for their 45-day review back to the City Council. Uh, the time frame, if the Council elects to move these to the Planning Board, they would have 45 days. Um, so we're looking at the last meeting in March, I believe that's the report, uh, for introduction of the ordinance. The second reading would be the second meeting in April, um, where then lot-by-lot -lot development could begin roughly June 1st. Um, but tonight is the first step. The first step is always the 45 day review for the planning board. There's an ordinance for introduction 2018 1, which is naming the alleys. Um, and then 2018 4, which is the bond appropriation ordinance, capital ordinance for the capital improvement plan that we discussed last week. Um, most importantly, out of this is last week we received a three-level credit rating upgrade from Moody's to 8-2, um, which is the highest the city has ever been rated by Moody's ever. This allows us now to do this like a quote-unquote normal municipality would. Previously, since we were rated less than the state, we needed to seek state approval for everything. Um, so if you remember the last two years when we did this, January we would introduce, February I made the local finance board, or March the local finance board, and the subsequent approval. This speeds up the process. Um, it also saves us money because our professionals had to go to the local finance board. So when you count in my time, the professionals, we'd spend $2,000 to get these approved where quote unquote normal town wouldn't. So right off the bat, just from getting the upgrade, we're saving $2,000 this year um, by not having to do those sort of things. So we're, and then the second part of the ordinance is 2018 5 which is $250,000 in the self-liquidating um, utility, utility uh, sewer utility. <coughs> this is for um, items the RCBs to clean the FUs in the sewer plant. Um, and then there's this, the recommendation, I'm sorry, 2018-6 is the Main Street Redevelopment Plan. This was referred to the Planning Board, who took no action within the 45-day time limit. It comes back to us. Uh, this is the ordinance for um, the music facility and the possible the passive uh, concession for uh, valley parking. And that is all for tonight. Is there any questions? Let's just go back to the, uh, let me find it. the alleyways for a second. Just let's explain why this is being done. And then let's announce the names that have been chosen. Uh, it was done for historic buildings that have been located throughout the city. Um, that's, that's what's being named after. Probably. That's what they're being named after, but it has to be done as um, delivery services, specifically Amazon, isn't able to deliver to some properties. Uh, there's two alleys that have been a problem with this. Two property owners have, have said this is an issue. So what we're going to do is we're proposing renaming them all, or naming them all so that we can do it. Um, police and fire have been notified of this because they have been inserted into their CAT systems. Um, so the proposed names are? Charms Lane, Albion Lane, Fishers Lane, Cuba Lane, Roseland Lane, Kershaw Lane, and Mayfair Lane. So the staff is proposing that for introduction tonight. Thank you. It's because people live on these alleyways and they don't have a mailing address, so they're not getting their mail, they're not getting their deliveries, so they had to be named. And instead of just going A, B, C, D, E, F, or one through seven, or the other name was proposed at the last meeting, we said, let's name them after historic buildings that are no longer with us. Thank you. We'll move on to matters by city council. On Saturday, January, uh, yeah, January 27th, there's going to be an informational meeting for anyone who is interested in housing that's going to be erected on Springwood Avenue. 
Uh, there are a total of three projects, two are rentals, and one is uh, purchase units. If the, the seminar is going to be held at St. Stephen's AME Church. It's on the corner of Springwood Avenue and Prospect. Um, there will be presentations from the Asbury Park Housing Authority, Michaels Corporation, and Interfaith Neighbors. And in addition, there will be counselors there for credit counseling, mortgage counseling, and expungement counseling. And it's open to everybody, and we invite anyone who is interested to please come. What time? What time? time? It's 11 o'clock, and it's from 11 to 2. Thank you. The Asbury Park Awareness Committee is sponsoring a movement and meditation. What this is about is, is exercise. It's, it's going to be like yoga, free exercise. It's going to be a lot of different exercise. Uh, this coming Saturday at the, at the Mama Boys Club, the Boys and Girls Club, <coughs> and on Monroe Avenue, and it's going to start from 11 to 12. And I will be one of the instructors. So. <laughs> Welcome, share it with your friends and neighbors, and believe me, I'll lighten up on you. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Try to make it, it's from 11 to 12. Thank you. On uh, Tuesday, uh, January 30th, next Tuesday, at six at the Springwood Ave Senior Center, is a meeting to talk about an art park. Um, the topics that we're gonna discuss at that meeting are design, Youth created art, um, the environmental commission's involved in it as well. So the uh, art park would be located on, I think it's, it's, it's weird. It, it's, Packers. I'm gonna make, I'll put flyers out where, where there's two small little pieces of land that the city owns that we're gonna turn into a passive art park. And I will, uh, I'll put copies of this flyer out so you see where. Part of is on Atkins. Yeah, and it looks like Avenue A. Right. That's, That's it. it. Uh, Councilman Lane from Neptune asked me to make this uh, announcement. Uh, diaper drop. Recently, the baby pantry located in Neptune Township suffered a major loss due to a fire. Neptune Township is going to help in collecting diapers at their municipal offices to help the pantry restock their supply. Diapers can be dropped off beginning February 1st through February 28th. Times are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the administrative offices of the Neptune Township Senior Center and Neptune Public Library. 732-988-5200, uh, extension 231. So if anybody wants to help Neptune Township recoup from this fire, deeply appreciate it. The Asbury Park Public Library from February 2nd to April 14th are with an ARP tax aid helping people do free taxes. Uh, there's no appointments, it's walk-in only, so this is another great project being done in Asbury Park through the library, so that's available to all. Uh, again, February 2nd to the 14th. And then the last thing, and Baja Humboldt can work, but just as a reminder, February 1st, taxes are due, so I don't want anybody to hear that they didn't get their mail, which you probably haven't because the mail in Asbury Park is horrific. Uh, <laughs> uh, nobody does get their mail, so the tax bills did go out, the sewer bills did go out, but if you didn't get them, so you're watching this on APTV, they're due February 1st. That's all I have. Move on to matters by the city, uh, city manager. Uh, first one is Mosquito Control Commission request. Uh, the Mosquito Control Commission. In 2016, the city voted not to have the Mosquito Commission come in and spray as needed. Um, in 2017, they didn't ask us to. In 2018, they sent us. They sent me a letter asking if we'd be interested in again. Um, they they spray for mosquitoes. Um, so. At this point, I'm not asking for a resolution, but the next meeting, um, we might have one available, and, and I'll talk to some of you to see if this is something that the city wants to do. Um, it's passive. They tell us when. We correct them. <coughs> Last year, they didn't ask, and in 2016, the council voted it down. I think in 2015 and 16, the council voted it down. Moving on, beach operations. We've There's been numerous discussions about smoking on the beach. Um, and at one of the last council meetings, we were 
asked to try to figure out what staff would we'll be interested in recommending. There's no council action this time. We'll talk about it uh, tonight if you want, or at the next council meeting. So we're looking for an introduction of an ordinance at the end of February or early. Um, the staff's recommendation is not to allow smoking on the beach and allow it on the boardwalk. Um, that is from Garrett and Jovan Devine. My opinion, and I'm saying this because so you don't ask me, is I despise cigarettes everywhere. So I'm just a fan of banning them you know, worldwide. So don't ask me for opinion mm -hmm. because I despise them. <coughs> Tell us how you really feel, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Joe and Garrett are thinking ban them on the beach, allow them on the boardwalk. Uh, so this is just for your, your starting of thoughts, and we'll come up with ordinances for discussions at the next workshop and go from there. Also, um, it's time for the annual menu items as for the SDA with Madison Marquette. Um, the beach staff is, is requesting menu items of $2,000 for boardwalk signage street IDs. We want to be able to put cross streets on the light poles so that people know where they are. Uh, $7,000 for beach access mats, which were a huge hit last year, um, and we want to expand. They're asking for an additional handicapped beach chair. Um, the cigarette butt portals, um, so people can put their cigarettes away. The dual use litter trash containers, um, approximately 15, 15 of them, which is around $42,000. The construction materials for 30 additional lockers. Um, Garrett informed me the waiting list is over 150 people, so we're trying to find any way we can to get the lockers up. Um, and then there's the standard Wi-Fi fees and then the cleaning of the laboratories. Um, so if there's no objection, we can put a resolution for next meeting or the second meeting in February. But that's what Garrett has. Garrett go of that probably on the which is what our menu items allocation is. Any comments on that? I don't have comments on the menu items, but for the banning smoking on the beach, I mean, I think we could designate one area that can be. I mean, I'm fine with designating non-smoking areas. I just wouldn't ban it across the board, particularly when you have Anchors Bend and the beach bar where everyone's smoking anyway. So if we were going to do smoking um, and allow smoking on the beach, those two areas to me seem like the places that you would have them. And then ban it everywhere else. I mean, it's not illegal. Smoking's not illegal as much as, as, much as people may despise it. It's not an illegal. Last time. Anyway, so anyway, I just, I'm just putting my two cents in. <coughs> How I, you know, what, what, whatever comes before us, that's, it is what it is. I just think um, we can, we can carve out a, an area that already has smoking in it because of the beach bar. That's, that's all it. I have. Matters by the city attorney. I have no matters at this time. All right. At this time, we'll break until 7 p.m. Uh, regular council meeting. <coughs> Good evening. I'm going to open up the regular council meeting. We'll do roll call. Councilmember Chapman. Councilmember Clayton. Here. Councilmember Kendall. Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. Please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park, Press, the Coast, and the Star Ledger on January 4, 2018, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. First on our agenda is proclamation. The first proclamation is recognizing Herb Farrenbach. Are we going now? We can. Sure. Hold on, back. Devon. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. As someone who has served with you for the last two years on the planning board, I'm very pleased to present this proclamation. 
whereas Herb Ehrenbach has de dedicated his time and has been instrumental in the development and success of Asbury Park through his service on the Asbury Park Planning Board for the past 14 years, six as chairman and four as vice chairman, and whereas Mr. Berenbach has served on the design Re review committee, reviewing applications for citywide development, availing his real estate development skills and knowledge of city ordinances to improve development projects, served on the technical review committee, reviewing waterfront development applications for all the projects in the waterfront to redevelopment area that have been built over these many years, and whereas he has served on the te technical review committee reviewing waterfront development applications for all of the projects, and all these projects now under construction and planned for future development, and whereas Herb has contributed his extensive knowledge of Asbury Park and land development and planning to the completion of the master plan reexamination, volunteered on the city budget committee, researched and implemented an improved communication system for city hall and remote locations, and whereas he is highly respected for his professionalism and has been an active and contributing member of the community and a resident for 18 years, whose passion is to improve the quality of life for Asbury Park residents with development projects that are always in the best interests of the city, while also keeping in mind that each applicant deserves fairness and the right to proceed with development within com compliance of the city ordinances. Now, here, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and Asbury Park City Council hereby acknowledge and thank Herb for his 14 years of volunteer service, leadership, dedication, and valuable contributions to the successful development and future of Asbury Park. No, no, no. I mean, I love Asbury Park, and you just made me really tired realizing all of this, this time that I spent. But it was always for the benefit of everybody in, in Asbury Park and, and our city. We have a terrific place. Once you come to Asbury Park, you're hooked. And as soon as we got here, we moved here full time. So it's just absolutely wonderful. We love it. Thank you. Really, thank you. The next proclamation recognizing uh, City of Asbury Park School Choice Week would be done at a separate event. Next is the ceremonial resolutions. Resolution 2018-56, recognizing January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Can I have a motion to approve this resolution, please? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Go ahead. So this was uh, something the city was so happy to do when Janice contacted, contacted us to let us know that um, the students that you're seeing, most of the students that you're seeing here today worked on a human uh, trafficking awareness resolution for the city. So we're going to bring all the students up. We're going to read it. And then I think a few of them are going to say a few words. Is that, does that work for you, Janice? Yes. Could, could they speak first? Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Who am I giving to the mic, mic to first? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. My name is Micah Wright. Thank you for receiving us tonight. Collectively, we make, a group of, we make up a group of Asbury Park High School students who have been educated on the human rights issue of human trafficking. Human trafficking is a global problem that is often hidden from public's view. We have studied this issue in our social studies class and would like to share the following statistics with you. Hello, my name is Kayla. According to the Polaris Project, a leading authority on the modern day slave trade, also known as human trafficking, there are more human beings being held in a bondage today than any other time in history. Although slavery is commonly th thought to be a thing in the past, human traffickers generate hundreds of billions of dollars in profits by, tra by trapping millions of people in horrific situations around the world, including in the US, traffickers use violence threats 
deposition, debt bondage, and other manipulative tactics to force people to engage in commercial sex or provide labor or services against their will. Hello, my name is Tatiana. Um, human trafficking in, in includes both sex and labor trafficking. The International Labor Organization estimates the forced labor and human trafficking is a $150 billion industry worldwide. Hello everyone, my name is Anya Miles. The U.S. Department of Labor has identified 139 goods from 75 countries made by force and child labor. In 2016, an estimated one out of six endangered runaways reported to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children were likely child sex, child sex trafficking victims. The weekend of the Super Bowl marks an upsurge in human trafficking. Hello, my name is Anaya. January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Many municipalities adopted proclamations to educate the public about this important human rights issue. As global citizens and caring young adults, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, we graciously ask you to accept the proclamation declaring January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month in the city of Asbury Park. Thank you. So Janice, the teacher who reached out to us, do you just want to say a couple of words? about the project. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor and Council, for receiving our students this evening. We've spent about uh, two and a half weeks studying the human rights abuse known as human trafficking. And because we learned that January was Human Trafficking Awareness Month, we knew that collectively we wanted to reach out to the stakeholders of our town and and let them know that this is something that we're concerned about and really wanted to give voice to the voiceless. And uh, the students that you see here are part of a larger group of upstanders at Asbury Park High School who are learning how to become human rights advocates, not only to advocate on behalf of themselves, but on behalf of others. So thank you so much for this valuable opportunity and thank you for everyone who is here, uh, for Miss Terry's support, Miss Hughes, Miss Gray, Miss Baumgartner, all your support throughout our studies. And thank you so much for having us. Yeah, so we're gonna ask everybody involved to come up here and I'm gonna read the resolution. So everybody who's sitting, you have to come up here for, I'm guessing two and a half minutes for me to read it. <laughs> Okay. Oh. So this is a resolution recognizing January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Whereas human trafficking, modern slavery, is a 365-day-a-year horrific crime that takes place at the local level and can most effectively be stopped by, by an abolitionist movement in every municipality in the state. Human trafficking occurs when a person is recruited, harbored, obtained, or exported through force, fraud, or coercion for the purposes of sexual or labor exploitation, involuntary servitude, and other types of mental and physical enslavement. Human trafficking is modern slavery, a crime that is in direct opposition to the fundamental principles of liberty and human rights upon which our nation was founded, and a violation of the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which was ratified in 1865. Human traffic traffickers target vulnerable and or marginalized children, women, and men, isolating them from society and supportive networks and exploiting them for personal, personal and monetary gain. Traffickers use techniques to keep their victims and slaves that severely limit self-reporting. Many victims trafficked into the U.S. do not speak or understand English and are unable to communicate or seek rescue. 
The UN International Labor Organization estimates that nearly 21 million people are exploited for labor or commercial sex worldwide. The Bureau of Justice Statistics, the FBI's Uniform Crime Statistics Program, and the National Human Trafficking Resource Center report thousands of victims are exploited in the United States every year, including in New Jersey and the surrounding metropolitan areas. New Jersey is a prime location for human trafficking because it's a major national and international transportation corridor and a culturally diverse state. Under New Jersey and the US law, any person under 18 involved in the commercial sex industry is considered a human trafficking victim. The victims in include US citizens, documented immigrants, and New Jersey has increased its efforts to fight human trafficking through passage of the Human Trafficking Prevention, Protection, and Treatment Act, the creation of the New Jersey Commission of Human Trafficking, and the increased efforts of law enforcement and the Office of the Attorney General Division of Justice New Jersey Human Trafficking Task Force, resulting in an increase in indictments and prosecutions throughout the state. Because human trafficking is a borderless crime against individuals that violates the most basic human rights and deprives victims of every shred of personal freedom, state and national efforts alone will not eradicate the societal scourge. It is vitally important that all New Jersey residents be informed of and know how to identify suspicious behavior and potential victims. All local municipalities should have zero tolerance laws and protocols in place in local municipalities in partnerships with educators, community organizations, and faith-based groups should take responsibility for preventing this horrible crime and to help effectively uncover victims of modern slavery. The New Jersey State League of Municipalities commends the proclamation project and the comprehensive work of the New Jersey Coalition Against Human Trafficking. That work unites the efforts of over 100 diverse community organizations who work to abolish human trafficking through education, advocacy, and assistance to survivors, and to increase coordination and visibility of New Jersey's commitment to end human trafficking. So therefore, be it resolved that the city of Asbury Park recognizes January's Human Trafficking Awareness Month, that the city of Asbury Park urges all municipalities in New Jersey to locally observe the state and national Human Trafficking Awareness Day on January 11th of each year. Each town shall raise awareness and educate the public annually about the signs and consequences of human trafficking, promote opposition to human trafficking in all forms, encourage support for survivors of human trafficking in order to to restore their freedom and dignity, support all efforts by individuals, businesses, organizations, and governing bodies to prevent human trafficking. Be it further resolved that the city of Asbury Park urges all munis municipalities in New Jersey containing train or bus stations and ports of entry, including seaports, river ports, and airports, to ensure that port, train, and bus employee awareness raising efforts have been undertaken by local, state, and national agencies. Municipalities shall strongly encourage hotel and motel operators within their jurisdiction to undergo training on prevention of human trafficking and reporting laws. Be it further resolved that should that it should be the public duty of every New Jersey re resident to report human trafficking suspicions. Um, be it further resol resolve the copies of this resolution be forwarded to the governor, the lieutenant governor of New Jersey, the New Jersey Attorney General's Office, the Senator, and assembly members of District 11, the New Jersey Commission on Human Trafficking, the New Jersey Coalition Against Human Trafficking, the New Jersey State League of Municipalities, and members of New Jersey Congressional Delegation. That's it. So hereby, the city of Asbury Park hereby declares January Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And yay. And thank, I want to thank everybody here for not only taking the time to work so hard on this, on this resolution, but for bringing it to us so we were able to proudly pass a resolution that you all worked so hard on. So that, that means the world to this entire council. Good. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Don't scare me like that. It's not funny. <laughs> I know. He loves you. I, I, love, I, I, I absolutely love this guy. There was such a level of irony to that. <laughs> right? Isn't there a level of irony to that? All right, at this time, we're going to continue on with our agenda. Can I have a motion to open a meeting to the public, please? Move it. Second. Anyone wishing to speak before the council, please come up to the mic in the back, state your name, address for the record. Each member of the public has three minutes to speak. Hi, my name is John Caplow. I live at 1701 Ocean Avenue in the Esbury Senior Tower. And I'm sure that a couple of weeks ago during that extreme cold spell we all remember, um, there were a lot of heating problems up in that building. Uh, another person that lives in that building and myself reached out to several different people we know on council. Uh, they in turn energized uh, Rob McCune and some other people, some of the other inspectors, and I came to thank them for doing such a great job as far as the timeliness of their response. Uh, immediately after the problem was reported for the next three days, uh, various people and inspectors were there just double checking, making sure they had everything uh, notated. And so I just wanted to spend a minute uh, thanking the council and Rob McCune, if I may, individually, and Mayor John Moore, because I know he took a couple of phone calls. Uh, and thank you very much on behalf of the Senior Tower. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if you'd like me to make a statement right now regarding the, uh, the Westside Community Center, I'd be happy to. Please. Okay. Um, the Mayor and Council have received and reviewed the submission that was made by the Asbury Park and Neptune Committee to Save the Westside Community Center, Inc., dated December 1st, 2017. This evening was the first time that the Mayor and Council had the opportunity to review this matter collectively, which was done during our executive session under the topic of attorney-client privilege due to the fact that there are many legal issues involved with this matter, and as City Attorney, I provided my advice during that time period. The Mayor and Council are currently performing appropriate due diligence concerning this matter, including an evaluation of all legal and policy considerations. It should be noted that the tax-exempt status of the Westside Community Center is still a matter which is pending before the Tax Court of New Jersey, and no final decision has been rendered yet by the court to confirm the validity of the tax sale certificate that is held by the city. We do expect a decision by the Tax Court in the next several months. In the meantime, this matter is under review by the city, and no final determinations have been made at this time. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Wendy Johnson, and I am a member of the Committee to Save the Westside Community. Can Senate. you just please state your address for the record, please? My name is Wendy Johnson. I live at 1803 Millbrook Avenue, Neptune, New Jersey. And I am a member of the Committee to Save the Westside Community Center. Our mission is to return the Westside to its original mission of providing services in support of the health, education, and well-being of the surrounding community. Our group consists of local, local residents who have past relationships with the West Side, are either benefiting from the programs, and or actively working on the board or administration. As the city of Asbury Park and surrounding areas have flourished, the positive impact has barely been, been felt in the West Side of Asbury Park in the midtown of Neptune Township. There are issues that must be addressed with locally driven targeted solutions we need to provide opportunities for residents to take part in the aggressive rebirth of this area of the Jersey Shore. Currently, there are no formal programs at the Westside Community Center that supports these needs. Our goal is to work with committed people to reestablish a functioning organizational infrastructure that will turn around the Westside Community Center and establish it as a community-based resource to drive positive change in the surrounding community. What can the City Council do for us? Well, we would like you to act on that request to put the uh, website into receivership. Tonight we were hoping, but as soon as possible. 
We also need your continued support to drive and provide locally based solutions to the west side of Asbury Park and the Midtown and Neptune Township. In closing, our organization is interested in working with like-minded people who see not only the needs of the community, but the potential of the community. I am a resident of Midtown and Neptune, and I have many family members who live on the west side of Asbury Park. All of our committee members have similar stories. So we, so we know the importance of these efforts and are committed to run the marathon to remake the West Side Community Center into a vibrant center committed to addressing the needs of the surrounding community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shonda Neal. I live at Three Manor Drive in Neptune, New Jersey. And I also work in Asbury Park at John Conover Agency. <coughs> I am part of the committee to save the West Side Community Center. And we, the committee to save the West Side Community Center, are a group of professionals with deep roots in the West Side Community Center who came together to create and execute an action plan to replace and reorganize the current defunct leadership in order to restore the center to its original glory. Our vision for the center is to carry relevant and exceptional programs for all in our community from the youth to the seniors and to foster the true meaning of community. We have been organized and planning now for a little more than two months and we can no longer stand by and watch our children and all in the community be underserved and to let our beloved center remain in dismay and disrepair. While Asbury Park has been gentrified and restored beyond its original glory, the question looms large, what will become of the southwest side of Asbury Park? Will it be gentrified and lose its rich culture, social and economic vibrancy it had prior to the riot? Or can it be revitalized and be restored beyond its original glory too? Can Asbury regain such a blended and diverse unicorn where all sides of the city thrive and prosper? We believe we, the committee, can and will be the catalyst to create an Asbury where all Asbury can thrive, the rich, the middle class, and the poor. We are committed to creating the West Side Community Center, the social, economic, and cultural centerpiece that it once was. We believe it's our responsibility as the community to restore our beloved center and not that of the government. So we ask you to do no heavy lifting, but we request you make an application for receivership so that we can get back on course as soon as possible. Too much time has passed, and we owe especially the children of our community so much more. We want them to experience at least what we did, and that is to have a safe, vibrant, healthy center of learning, of recreation, and of creation, where they can discover their attributes and talents and be exposed to professionals in all walks of life, we understand that our call is now urgent. We must act now. The time is now. If not now, when? If our request is granted, we are on course to opening up a summer program for our children this summer. So again, we ask you to act now. It is a matter of urgency. It is our priority. Thank you. Excuse me, excuse me. What is the name of your committee again? Okay, thank you. Felicia Simmons, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park, also a member of the Committee to Save the West Side Community Center. Um, I'm standing here as a recipient of the great um, gifts the West Side can give. Um, I found God in the halls of the West Side Community Center in a program that was called Project Hope Mission that is now Hope Academy um, Charter School under Alexis Harris. 
Um, we're in need of help and we're willing to work with anyone who is willing to work with us. Um, we stand as a community group of different collected members from all different walks of life, all professional in our experience, and some that are not professional in their experience, looking to move Asbury Park into the future, specifically the West Side. Uh, we have programs in different national organizations that are standing in the cusp, waiting, excited to work with us and come to Asbury Park to help in the flourishment of the community, of the whole. I'm excited um, in this new move to sit here and work with and see all the different diverse people. Um, my agenda is to push forward the community and work with everyone, not standing into profit because I don't plan to be a member of the board. I plan to just help facilitate um, new growth. Um, I want to thank you for your time and thank all who stand to work with us. And even those who feel that we are working against, we don't want to have um, discrepancy. We want to work as a collective community, learn from the past, and move steadily towards the future. So thank you and have a great evening. Thank you. Good evening, all. My name is Teresa Jones, Hill Drive and Neptune, former business owner in Asbury Park. I'm not a part of the committee, however, I am a former recipient of the activities of the West Side Community Center. She used to take dance lessons in the 1960s at the West Side Community Center. We had our recitals on the stage. I'm a former board member of the Center of Love, a former uh, a small drug and alcohol uh, treatment program and youth services that we coordinated and ran grants out of there. A couple of years ago, I tried to get on that board, myself and several other people. We have broad, extensive board, uh, nonprofit and for-profit experiences. I'm a former grant officer, a program officer from the state of New Jersey's Department of Health. I've run businesses for profit, and the blocks, the hindrances that are there for the community are beyond ridiculous at this point. And we need a push, we need the legal issues addressed, and we need the receivership in effect so that this gem of the West Side can be restored to what it is or was and we can get on with life. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and all those in attendance. My name is Beverly Holland. I live at 1103 Fordham Road in Neptune, New Jersey. I am a member of the committee, and I'm a former Board of Education member for 15 years in Neptune Township, and I currently chair the Neptune Township Public Housing Board of Commissioners. I was a member probably about 28 years ago of the Board of Commissioners, uh, of the uh, board for the Westside Community Center. We recently had the, uh, I'd say about four years ago, the Monmouth County Democrats held their mini convention at the Westside Community Center, and I was horrified to see the condition of the gym, the bathrooms there, and I'm even more horrified to find out that for the last several years, maybe even up to 10, that there have been no active programs and the like going on at the center. I do implore this town committee to look into this situation and do what you need to do, not what is politically correct, not what you personally feel, but you would recognize things that happened at that center need to be reinstated. Um, in Neptune, we have after school programs, more for the Title I programs of uh, tutoring children, but we don't have, our school doors close early and there's not programs that go on in the schools. I can't speak about what goes on after school in Asbury Park schools, but I think that the center standing alone with activities that uh, training other activities for community members and for the children of our town needs to be looked into and needs to be reinstated. Thank you for your time this evening. Go ahead, go ahead, speak. Okay. So, good evening, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Mayor, Council. My name is Curtis Moreland. I am the president of From Jersey with Love. 
the active agency that is in control of the West Side Community Center contractually. So I am wonderfully happy to hear that everyone is willing to sit down at the table and get our community center back together. I think we all need to give ourselves a round of applause because we're all here for the same cause. So as I expressed to Mr. Felins when he called our office, we're ready to sit down with everyone that wants to move the community center forward. We're willing to sit at the table with everybody. Anyone that wants to be involved, anyone that has ideas, programming, we're ready and willing to make that time and sit down at the table with everyone. We're there, I've been there personally for four years at the, at the community center volunteering, trying to help out as much as I can to, to kind of take away some deficiencies that's happening over there with the building. I do have a contractor's license, I, I'm very well versed in construction, so I've been trying to help out as much as I could. So now, with the formation of our nonprofit, um, we're ready to take things a little further. Um, and by that, we, we came, sat down with the board of the West Side Community Center, came, with a, came to an agreement that we will be the lead agency, we will take over, and we will run the agency right now. So this is where we're at. We need all the help from the people. We welcome, we have fact sheets that we can give out so you guys can know what's going on, what our future's looking out, what programmings we have. Our commit, some of our board members and trustee members are here tonight. We're, we're, open, we're open arms. So anybody that's saying they wanna help, we can sit down to the table and help because we're there now and I've been there and I've been putting in the time, the money and the efforts to get this community center back on track. So we welcome all of y'all. Let's go, let's sit down at the table and, and get it happening. No more bickering, no more, no more backfighting and all that stuff. If we're really about the community center, let's all sit down at the table and get the community center going. All right? Mr. Moreland, can you please state your address for the record, please? Uh, my, my personal address is 320 Long Branch Avenue. Um, but 115 DeWitt is uh, our agency, register agency address for from Jersey with Love. Okay, thank you. Curtis, I'm sorry. You can just yell it out. Name the agency again, please. From Jersey with Love. Got you. From Jersey with Love. Thank you. All right. Good evening, members of the council, mayor. My name is Mark Kim Shakur Purvis. I am a longtime resident of both Asbury Park and Neptune. Your current address, please. I currently live in Neptune, Seventh Avenue, Neptune. Um, <clears throat> I'm just listening. I just happened to show up to the meeting tonight because I heard that there was a meeting about the West Side Community Center. I don't know too much about the politics or too much about anything that's been going on with the West Side Community Center. Um, but I will tell you that, um, let me just back up a little bit. Being a, a resident of Neptune and um, also Asbury Park, in my sense of growing up, just the, the actual uh, boundaries that are designated based off of the jurisdictions, you know, it's just that, just for paper. I've grown up in the area and these are very small communities, so either I either know someone who knows someone who knows someone. You know, so it's like, it's a really, it's a kind of greater community. So with that being said, um, if I drive down the street and I ride past the, the landmarks like the West Side Community Center, Boys Club, we used to have like St. Peter Claver, um, a lot of different things where we would spend time at and do things, I don't see any of that anymore. But what I can say is, and I'm not a finger pointer, but I believe that as people, we're more responsible for the effort than we are the outcome. So it's like, what can we actually show or say that we're doing? You know, I, 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 I don't know, but I know that there's, there's, I don't see anything happening. And at and that point, I take to the city, you know, and, and ask if there's anything that you all can do um, to help, as, even if it's oversight in that. I really, I'm clueless in terms of whatever politics go on, but I work with young kids on a regular basis, you know. My full-time job, I work in, I, I'm, I'm, I work in counseling and, I do, and I'm working corrections and I work with a lot of people who are in trouble. 
and I know that they don't have no outlets. I just came from working with a 12 year old man, a 12 year old young man a little while ago and um, he's really clueless and doesn't have no resources. I mean, there's no resources out here. I spend a little bit of time with them. I talk to them. At one time, I know that just like all the young people around here, I would get myself into trouble and things like that, but I had resources that kind of gave me a lifeline a little bit. So when I spend a little bit of time with them, and if it's not really the, the sound structure he has at home, there's really no other outlets that can really be supportive and, and support the things that give him a, a, a him or others like him a, a, a clear way to go. So my, my, my comments and my, my request is that whatever it takes, I don't know, you know, I'm always around and I'm, I'm easy to find. I gave my name, I might know some of y'all, some, some of y'all don't, you know, but there's a lot of people who know me who know how to get in contact with me. It's all about, you know, what we genuinely want to do for these kids. Because I tell you, I see them here and then I see them in another place that's not so pleasant. No, but whatever the council can do would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Motion to close. Second. Yeah, you sat. Hi, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. I think you all received my letter this week. I was wondering if there was any answers. I didn't get a phone call from anybody about the zoning board and the outcome of the zoning board and the way it's been handled all these years. I was just looking up some things. It says after 10 years, you're supposed to review all <laughs> the uh, rules of the zoning board. And I think your, your zoning board hasn't been reviewed in over 20 years. There's a new house around the corner for me. It's a beautiful house. But it's as big as a quarter, and it's on a dime, if you know what I mean. It takes up the whole entire lot. I mean, there should be certain rules about that. And then I was informed that we were going to have a meeting on the 23rd zoning board. And I wasn't alone. Louise was with me. I called three times and they never changed a date. In fact, I called January the 11th, two days after the meeting, and the girl told me, oh yeah, it's still on for the 23rd. Doesn't anybody talk to each other around here? I mean, there's nothing that's really working right. All these things affect people that live in the neighborhood. This house is gonna affect me, the new house is gonna affect me, and yet nobody cares. They just go around, or they open a book, and they look at an old rule that they haven't looked at in 20 years. It's really not fair, and I want an answer. And I think by now, I could get an answer tonight about what they're doing about the zoning board and how this happened, that I get notice that the meeting is on the 23rd. Louise got the notice, and we were gonna tell the people in the neighborhood to come to this meeting. Anybody within 200 feet. It's seven months later. The first meeting was in July. Seven months later, everybody's supposed to remember? First of all, it was supposed to be in November, but they didn't get a full board, so they didn't want it. But in January, when nobody goes out and it's too cold, they decide to have the meeting. That's not fair. I wasn't even going to object to it, but I wanted it to be right for a historical neighborhood, which it's not going to be. We have a historical neighborhood, and they're going to build a modern house. How does that work? I didn't design the historical neighborhood. It's been there. And I want some answers about this, because this is not right. And a lot of people get hurt when they go before zoning boards and planning boards in this town. I hear about it. I don't usually attend the meeting. But I hear all the remarks about how planning goes on, no, dr and no parking, and you have something on the agenda tonight, another apartment house going up. Okay, one an answer. Mr. City Manager. Rita, as you're well aware, the zoning board and the planning board are autonomous boards like the Asbury Park Housing Authority or the Board of Education. We have no say over how they run their meetings. 
I read your letter. I read it in the coaster. I have concerns. Uh, we appoint the zoning board. We're asking for those answers. And that's all I can tell you at this point in time. I cannot go to the zoning board chairpersons and directly say, what happened? Give me this. So I'm doing that through the city manager and he's looking into it. And so that's the answer you're going to get tonight. Believe me, we, we don't sit on the zoning board just like we don't sit on the housing authority. It's a separate board. They have their own lawyer. They have their own planner. They have their own professionals. We just pay the freight. Yeah, but I'm talking it, about the mechanism in the city. We're, we're, the three people that are in that we're department. Go, we're, we're gonna, that's being looked into. What? That's being looked into. Okay. okay. I mean, like three people working in the department, nobody knows what the next one's doing. That's not right. Your, your letter made that perfectly clear and on okay. face value, I agree with you 100%, but let us look into it and we'll get back to you. Okay, I want an answer though. You'll have an answer with it. You'll have an answer before the next council meeting. Okay, because I don't want anybody else to get hurt with, with the zoning board not changing the rules, bringing them up to date <coughs> to the 21st century. Okay. They're still in, in 20 years ago. Thank you. Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue. Just to reiterate, and I, I hear what you're saying, John. Um, my issue, along with hers, is when we were at the zone, I mean, I don't know, if I, maybe I should be saying this to the zoning board, but I just wanted a manner of record. I don't expect you to do anything about it. I just want a manner of record. When we were at the meeting, they said, you will not be notified by mail again because they were having, they had to reschedule it. We understood that. So we go back to the meeting and then they didn't have it because there wasn't enough on the board or whatever. However, it just seems to me that when you're three or four months down the road, this is what may need to be revisited by the zoning board, that that much time, I think it should be remailed. I think they should mail it out again, a notice. That's my opinion. And I just think for that much time, but we, we stayed on top of it and well, you heard the end result. So anyway, I just wanted to reiterate that and just, I just think that when a certain amount of time goes by, it should be remailed or re-notified. All right, the other thing is, <laughs> I don't know who's parking in that parking lot. But we were kind of early tonight, and we barely got a space. I don't know what's going on, so it might be something you want to look at, or you. We, we had a big at. crowd earlier. That no, no, no. It was before. It oh. was before. You know, it was before the uh, other people came. It was crowded. So I don't know what's going on, but anyway, that was just another little aside. Thank you. Well, after this meeting, then the police are told the meeting's over give out tickets but we're not going to give out tickets attending people attending the council meeting so you know, if there's people parking there now illegally oh, one other thing I'm on Grand Avenue I'll give you this real quick I'm on Grand Avenue I live on Grand Avenue on the corner of Grand and, and 7th right up the street from the Tides Hotel um, they have bicycle racks so one of the members of I won't say who of the city says, how am I supposed to clean the street with the bicycle racks? Could you tell me or give me an idea who determines where those bicycle racks go? Because I think that's a kind of an odd place to put a bunch of bicycles on Grand Avenue. It's the Hotel Tides. Louis. I'm sorry? No, no, no. It's not Hotel Tides? It's, it's no. It was decided. It's on Grand. It was decided between the administrative staff, be it the planner and the transportation planner. Oh. Where is it again? So on Grand. Right on seven. Grand. So on Grand. Right on seven, Grand on the corner. In a no parking zone, in the yellow zone that nobody can park in. But there's also a no parking zone right across the street from from um, from the Tides, and it and that's on Seventh, and that just seemed like it's in front of someone's house. But I don't know if that would be a better place. But that seems a little almost dangerous too, because Grand Avenue is like a pretty busy street. I don't know if you want to rethink it and change it. 
I don't know. Well, we'll take a look at it. It's also one of the widest streets, probably the only street with a bicycle path on it. So that was another reason it was put on grant. But we will definitely look into it. Yes, and see. Right, we didn't want to take away any. It's taken away from where it is right now. But it's not taken away a parking spot. <coughs> right. Okay. We'll look into it. Thank you. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. What I wanted to make a suggestion about that bike rack, maybe it could be removed, let's say, from December 15th till April 15th, so the snow plows don't have to w worry about going around it. But they did remove the bikes to protect them, so that's an idea that the racks disappear for three months. Then the other thing, because of the snowstorm, how do we make sure it doesn't happen again where people don't know what side of the street to park? It was really a disaster. I know Amy was proud to hear the snow plows roaring through the city. Only because you had that on there. But I just think you really have to say from now on, the first day of the snowstorm, or whether it's a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, you can only park on the odd side or the even side. But you have to get that on next door and all the other lists that say they're part of Asbury Park. Now, the other thing, what are we guys doing about? getting the train or mass transit to deal with beach goers, can we start getting that on Facebook and the social media that there is a plan so you can save money so you don't have to worry about parking cars? Because believe it or not, you forget to pay your parking meter for 10 minutes, you get a nice thank you note on your car from the parking authority. So, and that ruins tourism. So maybe we can just get more people to come by mass transit the way they did it in the old days. And um, that's about it. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, I agree about the snow, Jerry. Oh. That we didn't get that. We didn't get the word out successfully on on where okay. to park. Okay, and then the other thing about I happen to hear about the zoning board making the mistake of giving Rita and Rita the wrong information. In this day and age, with everybody having their email, why can't they collect the emails and privately send them to people the updates on what's going on? Because I know my crowd doesn't have to listen to their emails, but most people do because I had to listen to it all week and it was a big episode, you know, that they missed a meeting that they were planning to go to. So um, maybe that's another way to do it. Collect the email addresses, keep them private. <coughs> okay, and... <laughs> Rita, we're, we're looking into it. Rita and Jerry, thank you. Okay, that. take that. And Jerry... That really made me lose my train of thought. Yeah, another good idea is the I forget what it is because of Rita, stop interrupting me. <laughs> uh, as far as the bicycles and everything, they're all owned and the bicycle racks are owned by Zagster, not by the city whatsoever. It's up to Zagster if they take them up. And I believe they did take them up during the snowstorm. Only the bike, not the rack. Right, the rack <coughs> could have been, they decided not to. If there's any damage to the racks or any damage to the bikes, if they're left out during the storm, it's the city doesn't pay a penny. It's all the company's responsibility. Okay, well, maybe that's when you renew the lease with that. Oh, well, you know, you, right. And you, but, you, you know, we had a, last year in February or March, we had some day in, <laughs> middle of the winter where it was like 80 degrees we had more people on the boardwalk than fourth of july so they wanted to go year round and there was a report i think in the ap sun how many uh people use the bicycles and how much carbon print it saved and everything so it is a 12 year venture I mean 12, 12 12 thank you 12 months okay well just an idea on it because people have to think about snow plowing around we, we we love ideas you, you're the one who finally got his gps and now we're still working on getting every house to have a number on it. And time clock, too. I like that. <laughs> Motion to close. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, at this time, we'll move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes executive session minutes of January 10th, 2018, workshop minutes of January 10th, 2018, and regular session minutes of January 10th, 2018. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're on to the consent agenda. 
The items under the consent agenda is 2018-57 resolution approving special event applications. 2018-58 resolution authorizing the submission of grant applications for the 2018 Cops and Shop Su Summer Shore Initiative Grant Program. 2018-59 resolution for permission to apply for FEMA assistance for firefighters grant. Resolution 2018-60, resolution approving appointments to the City of Asbury Park Green Team. 2018-61, resolution opposing New Jersey offshore oil and gas activities. Does anybody wish for any of those resolutions to be pulled? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? Move, Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2018-62, resolution approving a payment of bills. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-63, resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for the 2018 budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-64, resolution approving the award of contract for traffic striping services. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-65, resolution authorizing the professional services contract for technical assistant for the Mayor's Ball Foundation. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-67, resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park referring proposed amendments to the Waterfront Redevelopment Plan for the City of Asbury Park Planning Board and directing the Planning Board to take action, take certain action pursuant to NJSA 48-12A-7E. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. On to ordinances. Or ordinances for introduction. The first one is Ordinance 2018 1, an ordinance authorizing the naming of certain alleys located under the jurisdiction of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. The names are for these alleys are Charms Lane, Albion Lane, Fishes Lane, Cuba Lane, Roseland Lane. Kershaw Lane and Mayfair Lane. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for February 20, 2018. Ordinance 2018-4, bond ordinance providing for various 2018 capital improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, New Jersey, appropriating $4 million, therefore authorizing issuance $3,809,521 bonds or notes to the city to finance a part of the cost thereof. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for February 20, 2018. Ordinance 2018-5, bond ordinance providing for various sewer utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey appropriating $250,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $250,000, and bonds or notes to finance a cost of the finance the cost thereof. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for February 28, 2018. Ordinance 2018 6, ordinance approving amendment to the Main Street Redevelopment Plan. 
Have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please. Move, Move it. it. Move it. Second. <laughs> Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for February 28, 2018. There being no further business, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Anybody opposed? Me. I know, I said the same thing. <laughs> Good. 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 Good.